the presentation on the preliminary design for Patapsco High School and Center and Center for Arts Edition. And for that, I call on Dr. Grimm and staff. Thank you, Mr. Young. Uh, good evening. We're very excited to be here this evening to show the preliminary design presentation for the addition at Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mike Archbald, our manager for planning in the Office of Facilities Construction and Improvement, who will introduce uh, GWO and our architects working on this project. Hey, thank you. I'm excited to bring this forward to you today and we're grateful to have Paul Hume with GWWO, who is our architect, one of our trusted architects that we do a lot of work with and they're doing a wonderful job. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Paul take you through the project and we'll just answer any questions as we get through the presentation. Paul? Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, our agenda for today is broken into a number of sections. The first thing we're gonna do is go through some general information talk about project goals, then we'll get into how we have addressed those uh, situations in our design. We'll have some preliminary renderings, and then we'll talk a little bit about the project overview and then questions and answers. So first of all, some general information. Uh, the building additions of, of this project are there to support existing and new programs. It's important to understand, excuse me a minute, uh, it's important to understand that the building underwent major renovations between 2018 and 2020. So we're doing everything we can to kind of avoid touching that. The current SRC is 1,219. At completion of this project, the SRC will be 1,421. Current regional programs include functional academic learning support, social emotional learning, there's a very strong magnet uh, arts program that includes dance, music, visual arts. And then the current CTE programs of which there are seven include Project Lead the Way, Pro Start, Teachers Academy, Business Management to name but a few. And then for this project what's proposed is to add two new CTE programs, Construction and Design Management, Career and Research Development. When we look at project goals, one of the key things that we're always looking for is safety and security. This project will be like uh, typically those happen. That'll include new card readers and security cameras uh, in the addition area, adequate lighting so people can see what's happening, clear sight lines, improved circulation. That's one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later. And then separating the exterior entrance for the community school initiative so that people can approach the building without coming into the building itself. And then of course, there are two portable classrooms that will remove uh, resulting in the kids not having to leave the building. Some design features, new educational support spaces include the auxiliary gym, classrooms, collaborative learning areas, seminar rooms, teacher planning, restrooms, storage, uh, which we'll review. And then of course, we're doing all this to provide a 21st century learning environment. We wanna improve the classrooms and support space sizing. Uh, the business classrooms, for example, right now are in spaces that are undersized. We're gonna adequately size those and then repurpose those spaces. Uh, additional collaborative learning areas so that uh, kids can get together and actually collaborate. And then state-of-the-art technology wherever possible. While this project does not have a sustainable target, such as lead silver, we are always thinking about it because it's good business and smart. Uh, and in terms of energy efficiency, we're looking at our building envelope to help keep the, the warmth in and the warmth out in the summer and correctly sizing the MEP systems. We don't want systems that are too big or too small and wherever possible, we're tying in and using the systems that are already there. And then ultimately we wanna enhance the student learning environment. And that includes basically making it a more comfortable place to be and learn. So we're gonna maximize daylighting wherever possible with windows and provide views to the outside, approve, uh, improve the acoustics. Of course, you can't learn if you can't hear. And then redu reduce travel time between spaces. That really helps, again, reduce the potential stress that might be on a student. Uh, we're always talking and thinking about cost 
uh, as good stewards for the county. And on a civil and structural mechanical standpoint, we're conducting targeted geotechnical investigations. We're doing a lot of borings out there. We don't want to surprise uh, during construction. Uh, we're looking at the steel framing. Uh, if we could put the uh, steel framing up and then come back and put the masonry up, that usually uh, enhances the construction period and reduces it, therefore saving money. And then we want to be a real we want to work with the existing systems. We don't want to introduce something new. We want to work and, and be a cohesive relationship with those. Architecturally, we're improving the building efficiency. Uh, in other words, the relationship of corridors to, say, functional spaces such as classrooms. We're simplifying the additions in the footprint. We're trying to view, uh, avoid jogs and corners and all that sort of good stuff that does add cost. We're standardizing the spaces for flexibility uh, and, and functions like that. And then windows and door openings, not having a ton of them, that helps with a first cost as well as a long-term maintenance cost if you have to go back and say, for example, replace a glass in a window. Patapsco High School is located in the heart of Dundalk, uh, just off of Wise Boulevard to the south, Merritt Boulevard to the west, North Point Boulevard to the east and north. As we zoom in within a one mile radius, there are five elementary schools and one middle school. Moving out to two miles, there are four additional elementary schools, two middle schools and a high school, Dundalk Sellers Point Technical. Zooming into the site, you'll notice that the site is basically divided into two areas to the north of the athletic, athletic fields. To the south is the school proper with parking lots and things of that nature. And they're divided by utility easement, which is a pretty significant uh, event on the site. It really limits or rather works as the northern boundary for any additions that we put in there because we cannot build on top of it. Zooming in a little bit closer to even just the school, we have the main entrance off of Wise Boulevard, the student drop off to the east, building services, parking, tennis and basketball courts that are off the gymnasium and the fields. Heading over to the west side, you'll see the JROTC portable, which is the first one we'll be removing. There's an exterior arts courtyard that gets used, the bus loop, and then that very large portable classroom building, which is also going to be removed with the bus loop entrance and then ultimately parking that was added in not too distant future or past rather. Uh, for access to the main entrance. Here are some images of the school. This is the main entrance. Wise, as we move counterclockwise around the building, we have the auditorium service area cafeteria. This is at the back of the building, looking back at the gymnasium. And then the uh, bar, the classroom bar, wing number three, and that portable classroom right there to your right is the JROTC uh, building that we'll be removing. And then finally, a look back at the bus loop where you can see that large uh, portable classroom that we'll be removing. Moving into the building itself proper, uh, we have the administrative suite to the south with the auditorium directly uh, off of it. There's a learning commons, cafeteria, kitchen, and a music classroom area, and then the gymnasium to the north of the east side. Heading to the west, again, that JROTC building, there's an arts wing, three classroom wings, and the large portable classroom that we'll be removing as part of this project. Uh, you heard me talk a little bit earlier about circulation. Uh, and how we can potentially improve that. The blue represents the current circulation. And as you can tell down by the bus loop, there isn't that connecting piece, nor even up by the gymnasium kind of rounding that out. And so it would be great if we could come up with a way of potentially filling those in. This re reduces circulation time and getting from classrooms to classrooms, and it eliminates dead end corridors. And I'm happy to say we were able to do that this image represents the building area uh, that we'll be touching. The dark green represents new construction additions. And then the light green represents where we're going to be doing very selective renovations. Taking a look, stepping back even a little bit further in terms of the functions of the space, 
uh, you can see we've started to color code again the additions that we're doing. And I'm going to walk you through what, what that is. So starting with ProStart, we have a new ProStart lab with a classroom. Uh, that community use space I mentioned is, is located next to a secure vestibule. Again, thinking about safety for the kids and the, the, the occupants. Heading to the north, we have our new JROTC uh, suite, which will replace the, um, the trailer. Uh, construction and design management, as well as the auxiliary uh, gymnasium. Heading a little bit off to the west, we have our business classrooms, career development, uh, ESOL rooms, business career R&D offices, things of that nature. And then in our new connecting kind of corridor link, we have two general classrooms and support spaces such as collaborative learning, seminar rooms, and then directly across the corridor in a space that was almost made for this project are a, a series of support spaces and offices. Heading counterclockwise around for the uh, stadium, we'll be providing a new comfort station, repurposing some classrooms, which are going to be going into the additions. And then there's a connecting link that we're going to make slightly larger uh, so it becomes more functional. And then off of that, we're going to provide teacher planning for supervision. And again, always thinking about safety and things of that nature. Heading to the, the, the south, this is the link that's directly adjacent to the bus loop to the left. Uh, and again, that is monitored by general classrooms, seminar rooms, and things of that nature, teacher planning. Heading to the south, uh, in the space that, that is currently used by uh, the construction folks, we're going to turn that into a special education classroom and lab with uh, seminar rooms and an office, as well as some teacher planning. And then right now, we're, we're talking about potentially relocating the greenhouse. It has to do with a code issue, but that would be the location we would do it. And then off of the learning commons, we're putting a fairly sizable addition, which would bring this up to standard that you would see in other high schools that you're currently building. In the auditorium, uh, we're doing a fair amount of renovation work, uh, but it's limited really to the stage area. We're keeping the seats the way they are. Uh, we're enlarging the stage area by kind of uh, uh, flattening out that front, but more importantly, we're taking down several walls that uh, really just, for lack of a better word, are in the way. And this will enlarge the overall stage and make it more functional. And then to the back, we're providing new dressing rooms and restrooms, which are adequately sized and meet code, as well as stage storage, which is currently uh, unavailable. And then finally, for this area, we're adding a new instrumental classroom with practice rooms and again, a secure vestibule wherever you possibly can. This gives you an overview of where those spaces are located. And then this gives you an overview of the rest of the building so that you can understand the relationships of spaces. Pink represents general classrooms and educational support. The orange represents the arts with the auditorium in purple and the gymnasium in brown. And all those green spaces are, are CTE programs of one form or another. From a site standpoint, because we're putting these additions on, there's a slight conflict in that where we need to put the auxiliary gymnasium in construction, it is over the existing tennis courts and basketball courts. The current thinking is that we would move those to the north just above the utility easement and relocate the baseball field and then the softball field to the west side, not touching the stadium. And then we're adding additional parking uh, to provide that extra capacity on the east side. Here are some general images. They're very conceptual in nature right at this point. We're still working through what they are, but this is at the bus loop and it shows that connecting link. And our goal is to basically use masonry and similar materials that exist in the school. Coming around, this is the back of the auditorium, which is that large volume to the left. And so here you can see the, the stage support as well as the, uh, the classroom for the arts. This is pro start uh, to your to the left of the, the image and then the construction management to the right. And we'll continue around the back. 
And starting on the left, you can see the construction management, the auxiliary gymnasium, the business classrooms, and then a new entrance into the school directly off of the fields. For our schedule, we'll be wrapping up design early fall of next year, so in just about literally a year. Uh, construction will start depending on permits. As you know, permitting uh, can, be, can be difficult and we'll work through that. And then ultimately uh, construction complete, that needs to be determined where we'll come up with a phasing plan, which is really in the next steps of the project. And so with that, thank you. And we'll entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you for the presentation. Are there any questions by committee members? Mr. Emery, I've got a question, Mr. Young. Go right ahead, Mr. McMillian. I'm just curious, once you finally break ground and get started, what's a ballpark on how long it will take you to complete it? This Mike, point, this my question? Is, yep. All right. Mike, you want to take that one or you want me to? Yeah. Uh, at this point, we are still working through some of the details of that. But depending on when we get the funding, um, you know, the construction will vary based on when we get the funding and when we can actually get that started. So um, that's still to be determined and we'll have to work through the phasing for that at this point. So we'll have to he'll come back to you with more details once we get better projection of when the funding is going to be available. Are there any additional questions? Hi there, it's Ms. Stolesky. Go right ahead, Ms. Stolesky. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, and it's really admirable all of the innovative ideas being put into the plan. I know you said that you're not going to reach LEED certification. And I just was wondering, is that because it's too costly or is there something about um, the environmental conditions of the site that would make it impossible? But I'm just curious as to why, because I do know other schools have that. So, and thank you for answering my question. Mike, again, do you want to Answer yeah, I can one. answer that. So the um, it's not required by the state that we on this type of a renovation project, but we still use the same goals and things with our mechanical systems and roof systems and everything else that will meet the requirements of LEED. It's just we don't go to the expense of filling out the LEED, the forms and getting certified and getting all the documentation. The required, but we still maintain the level of quality and performance that we require in our additions as well as in a new project. That's great to hear. Thank you. And um, just a quick question, just one more quick question about the new um, career and research development program, which um, it sounds great. Um, is it in any other Baltimore County schools? And if not, um, what would that program, like what would be like a summary of what that program would entail? Thank you. Dr. Graham, did you want to answer that? Do you want? Uh, yes, I can answer that. Ms. Stileski, I, I do believe it is in other uh, schools. Okay. It's not exclusive to Patapsco. Uh, it is um, a program that it, that I believe, are you talking about the CRD program or are you talking about um, the, the culinary Career program? and research development, is that CRD? Yeah, the, CR, the CRD program is, I, I think it's actually at almost, CRD is almost at all of our high schools. Um, mm -hmm. th this particular space is, is, is just a redesignated space for that as one of our CTE programs. And basically it is um, part of that that internship and school to career program that we have, um, C CRD is just the 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 name the name for it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any additional questions? Okay, I have one question for you. I know you're in in this um, design. 
you're accounting for having like an auxiliary gym. Um, but also, you know, based on the plan, the, the state rated capacity is increasing by uh, 200 students. Is there any um, consideration for the cafeteria? We, we looked at the cafeteria and the size, um, there's, there's enough space currently to take the upcoming capacity. It's really, it's didn't need the, to be expanded. There is some space that could be expanded in the future if needed, but we wanted to maintain that space because it's a desired space, um, students and staff currently, but the, the cafeteria and the food prep areas are sufficient for the size of the school when the addition comes online. Okay, thank you. That's good to hear. Are there any more questions for about the presentation? Mr. Young, can I go back to Mr. McMillian's question really quickly? Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Archibald, Mr. Hume, I believe Mr. McMillian's question was was really about how long the duration of the construction would take. So I don't know that he's looking for the 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 timeline of of what you know when we're going to begin and when we're going to end. So if you could address how long a project of this nature would roughly take once construction begins i believe that is that's more what his question was pointed towards rather than you know when we expect construction to begin sure that's that's that, that makes perfect sense um typically we would see something two to three years um and the reason for that extra years has year has to do because it'll be an occupied building um one of the things we're doing with this design is we can essentially build almost all of it and keep the existing portable classroom in operations, which is a, a huge, a huge thing. And so that would actually move out uh, is one of the last phases. And then we would build the connecting link at the bus loop. Um, so again, it's uh, we're, we're being a little non-committal, but I would anticipate that. But our primary focus is to figure out how to build it as quick as possible, uh, dependent on funding, because the quicker you can build it, the, the more the more savings there are, and obviously less of an impact to the school. Thank you. Yep. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Human. And I would just add too, it's it's really important on projects of this scope that we also that that summertime is very critical for us as Mr. Hume said because the building won't be occupied during that time so it's an opportunity for us to um, to be able to do things uh, that we would not normally be able to do when the building is occupied thank you Dr. Graham thank you um, Mr. Hume for the presentation. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Should I stop sharing now? Um, yes, you can stop sharing. Ms. Faya will we'll start sharing. We will wait uh, approximately three minutes and then officially start the building and contracts meeting at five. Mr. Young, as a reminder to all members of the meeting, <clears throat> we will be able to stop and start the live stream. So we will be live streaming for those three minutes. So um, muted mics would be great. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.
my clock indicates it is five o'clock. So I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, September 9th, 2024. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. The board committee members will say their names before making and seconding an, a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum may be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Lichter? Present. Ms. Soluski? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Thank you. There are four. Thank you, Ms. Faya. May you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Young. Dr. Guinanato? Present. Dr. Grimm? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. McCall? Present. Ms. Holden? Present. Mr. Hodge? Present. Ms. Blutner? Present. Ms. Berquist? Ms. Becker? Present. Ms. Kerr? Present. Ms. Lazari? Present. Ms. Pashinda? Present. Mr. Roberts? Present. Ms. Loff? Present. Ms. Stansberry? Present. Ms. Stahl? Present. Mr. Bertizan? Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank you, Ms. Vaya. Mr. Hartlove, please state your name for the record and proceed with our first contract. Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Chris Hartlove. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for BCPS. And our first contract is um, ARA-210-19 Digital Library Resource uh, Multidisciplinary Research uh, Databases. This is uh, an extension of the contract and an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Uh, the ex extension takes us through August 31st, 2025. Um, the increase in uh, spending authority um, is $200,000, uh, bringing the maximum contract spending authority from $560,000 up to $760,000. Um, the modification will provide for continued digital library resources and multidisciplinary research databases. Thank you. Are there any questions from committee members? If so, please state your name and question. Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, can you please proceed with our next contract? Sure. CWA-128-24 Sheltered Instruction Observation Protocol professional development and materials. This is a new contract for five years that would, would take us through uh, September 30th, 2029. Um, the maximum contract spending authority for the uh, contract is $500,000. The contract will provide professional development and materials for content leaders, content teachers, leaders, and central office staff to better serve the learning needs of multilingual learners in science and social studies with a focus on secondary schools. Thank you. Are there any questions from committee members? Mr. Harlove, if you could proceed with our next contract. 
Yes, JBO-716-22 substitutes and other temporary personnel, including virtual classrooms and offices. Uh, this is an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Um, the, uh, the contract is currently um, a $78 million contract, and we're requesting to increase the maximum contract uh, spending authority by eight. $8.5 million, taking the total contract spending authority to 86.5 million. Kelly Education provides for full employee life cycle uh, that includes, but is not limited to, active targeted recruitment, onboarding, training, benefits, and retention a package, weekly pay, and live substitute uh, support. Approval is requested again to increase the spending authority um, as indicated uh, a moment ago. Are there any questions? Mr. Hartlove, if you could proceed with our next contract. And actually, I believe the next contract is for uh, Dr. Grimm. If, am I correct on that, Jess? That's correct. All right, you're up. All right. Good evening again, Mr. Young and members of the committee. Our next contract number four is JHO 710-24, Interior and Exterior Cabling, Installation, Maintenance and Repairs. This new contract will provide installation, repair, maintenance and replacement of existing and new copper and fiber optic cabling, underground, inside of building and overhead running of cables in support of the Department of Information Technology. Are there any questions from committee members? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with our next contract. Contract item number five, DEI 618-24, tire recapping. This new contract provides tire recapping services for the Department of Transportation. Recap tires are installed on rear wheel drive, heavy truck and bus applications. This is an industry standard, which BCPS has used for many years. It is more environmentally friendly and cost effective than solely purchasing new tires. Are there any questions? OK, Dr. Graham, if you could proceed with our next one. OK, contract number six, item number six. CWA-115-24, Meeting Space for Professional Development. This contract will provide event space for professional development for system-wide division, department, or office events that cannot be accommodated by facilities within the BCPS for portfolio. Are there any questions? Mr. Young, it's Ms. Lichter. I do have a question. Please proceed. Um, just in light of us using the formally known, I know there's a new name, I, the formally known Loyola building. Um, what do you anticipate that that would not be able to accommodate us that we would need to use this contract? Um, so that's a very, that's a very good question, Ms. Lichter. Um, this contract was actually already in the works before we made the agreement with Loyola. However, it is for anything large scale, for example, safe schools where we put um, seven or 800 people in, in a room at one time, um, something that cannot be accommodated um, through multiple sessions um, that we use at, at the EDC, the Employee Development Center, which is the former Loyola building. Um, so it would, be a, it would be a large scale event such as, uh, such as that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any additional questions? Thank you, Ms. Lichter. Uh, Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with our next contract. Okay, item number seven, ASI 828-22, Equipment and Tool Rental Services. This contract modification extension is continued equipment and tool rental services for the Department of Facilities Support Services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year with one awarded vendor approved by the board on September 13th, 2022. This contract will be utilized during certain weather events when critical equipment such as chillers, boilers, or other HVAC equipment fails. This is intended for short-term emergency situations. Are there any questions? Dr. 
Graham, if you could proceed with our next contract. Okay, contract number eight, CWA-125-24, Boiler Installations, Repairs, Preventative Maintenance, and Inspections. This contract will provide for boiler installations, repairs, preventative maintenance, and inspections for the Department of Facility Support Services. This contract will provide for contracted services on a scheduled and as-needed basis to ensure all building systems are safe and operational. Are there any questions? Dr. Grimm, if you could proceed with the next contract. That's number nine. It's listed as JBO-722-20, Domestic Water Heater Preventive Maintenance, Repairs, and Installations. This contract modification includes a request for increased spending authority to provide for the continued preventive maintenance, repair, and installation of domestic water heaters. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1,090,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,435,000 with four awarded contractors approved by the board on August 11th, 2020. This contract modification will increase spending authority for the remainder of the contract duration. Are there any questions? Please proceed with our next contract, Dr. Grimm. Our next contract is LKO-404-21, Modification, Playground Equipment and Associated Services. This contract modification requests an extension to provide for the continued purchase and installation of playground equipment for the Department of Facility Support Services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year with one awarded vendor approved by the board on September 14th, 2021. Are there any questions? If you could proceed with our next contract, Dr. Crow. Item number 11, which is contract JBO-704-21, Plumbing, Supplies, and Equipment. This contract modification includes a request for increased spending authority to provide for the continued plumbing supplies and equipment for the Office of Facility Support Services and the Division of Curriculum and Instruction. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $500,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,100,000 with five awarded contractors approved by the board on March 9th, 2021. This contract modification will increase spending authority for the remainder of the contract duration. Are there any questions? With our next contract, Dr. Grimm. Item number 12 is contract NTA-502-23, Security System Access Control Installations, Repairs, Parts, and Preventive Maintenance. This contract modification changes the name or assignment of an approved vendor from ADT Commercial LLC to Everon LLC. Are there any questions? Please proceed with our next contract. Item number 13 is contract MBU-508-17, Purchase of Floor Care Machines and Associated Equipment. This contract modification changes the name and assignment of an approved vendor from FPC Holdings Incorporated to Brady Industries of Maryland LLC, TA FPC Distribution. Are there any questions? contract, Dr. Grimm. The next item is number 14. It's contract JME-508-22, Construction Management Consulting Services. This contract modification requests an increase in spending authority to provide for continued construction management consulting services for the Office of Facilities Construction and Improvement. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by $500 million bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $550 million with 13 awarded contractors approved by the board on December 7th, 2021. The spending authority increase request represents a shift in approach 
regarding construction management services. When the original RFP was developed, all of BCPS's large projects were delivered via CM multi-prime or agency methodology. Under the agency delivery method, BCPS holds all of the trade contracts, which are typically somewhere around 12 to 15 or 16 contracts, and the risks associated with those contracts. Under the CMAR delivery method, the CM holds all the trade contracts and all the risks associated with those contracts, not unlike traditional general contractor approach. A project delivered under the CMAR method will have one large contract for the entirety of the project, while projects using the agency method would have between 12 and 16 contracts. The total cost of the project is very similar regardless of the delivery method. The construction, construction industry is moving towards the CMAR delivery method as it is dramatically reducing risks to the owner. There's one large contract with a quality-based selected CMAR firm versus 12 to 16 smaller contracts on an agency project. Are there any questions from committee members? Program, please proceed with our next contract. Our next item is number 15, contract DEI-607-24, Cromwell Valley Elementary School HVAC system replacement. This is a construction contract for which competitive bids were solicited for all labor materials and associated work required to remove the existing HVAC system and install the new HVA system, including all associated electrical and mechanical work at Cromwell Valley Elementary School. Are there any questions? Yes. Dr. Grimm, excuse me, um, if you could proceed with our final contract. Our last contract is DEI-610-23, Owings Mills High School Chiller and Cooling Tower Replacement. This is a construction contract for which competitive bids were solicited for all labor materials and associated work required to replace the chiller and cooling tower at Owings Mills High School. Are there any questions? There being no further questions, we will proceed to closing the meeting. I am going to um, break up the vote into two. So I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through three and five through 16 be moved to the full board for approval. So move, Lichter. Is there a second? Second, Stolowski. Thank you. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts one through three and five through 16 for the board for board action. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faye, if you could please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Stolowski? Yeah. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faye. Though there being four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through three and five through 16 will be moved to the will be moved forward to the board. May I have a motion to, to recommend item four be moved to the full board for approval? So moved, Stolowski. Thank you, Ms. Stolowski. Is there a second? Second, Lichter. Lichter, Lichter. Ms. Faye, could you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Mr. Uh, Young, are we going to have a discussion on this? We can have a discussion, yes, sir. I'm curious, sir, did I miss something? Why are you separating four out? Because I'm going to recuse myself from voting on item four. Gotcha, thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Okay, Ms. Fay, if you could please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Young. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Solisky? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? 
Thank you, Ms. Bayer. Yeah. Thank you. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts four will be forwarded to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held Monday, October 7th, 2024, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.